Salutations friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to share with you my personal greatest of all time summer scents. Now over the years I've shared my top list and recommendations for summer fragrances and I sat down and for the past few days I went through my entire collection and I chose the fragrances that I personally love the most for summer. Now summer in Florida can be insane. Even moving to northern central Florida, it's still tropical and swampy. So my recommendations vary very much, but a lot of these fragrances can quote unquote beat the heat, but they're also very tailored to my tastes, which can be some of these are tea-based fragrances, some of these are fragrances that are a little bit more heavy and complex, heavy on the florals, heavy on the woods, things like that, that all work in beautifully warm weather. But if you live in a climate that's super hot and humid, these work too. But these are my favorite fragrances for summer. And these, a lot of these fragrances I've had in my collection for years. So I figured I'd sit down and share with you guys, and I will break this up into obviously different uh, categories. And at the very end, I will share with you the most favorites, like utilitarian fragrances. These are the ones that I've had in my collection for a super long time that I just wear all the time. First one is Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue. This is a classic designer fragrance. This is what I consider my gateway fragrance. I'm not gonna go into notes too much, performance too much, obviously. I will link relevate, relevant and related videos and reviews below. But if you guys don't know, this is what I consider my gateway fragrance. Gorgeous scent and perfect for um, and just when it comes down to summer. There's another fragrance that I can't find. I think I packed it to travel and I don't know where it is. Uh, Paris Hilton uh, Passport South Beach. That one also is a part of this list. I, I just don't have the bottle. I have this bottle. I think it's Innie's. It's the fragrance of uh, Ireland. I haven't worn this one too much. I do really like it and I do wear it. I haven't worn it enough to review. I actually have it up here to wear more to review. Uh, this is taking the the place of the Paris Hilton passport. Uh, that one, if you guys have followed my channel, I mean, you can see I have thousand dollar bottles in my collection and you will see very expensive bottles in this list, but Paris Hilton passport, uh, South Beach is a like, I must have in my collection for summer. It's so good. And if you think light blue is too expensive, if you don't like to spend a lot of money on fragrances and if designer fragrances are out of your budget, uh, that is a great, great scent. Another one that I've been wearing a lot, obviously this bottle looks full. I've had a bunch of small travel uh, like samples and then like the little ones of this, but I do wear this one a lot. This is Blackberry and Bay from Jill Malone. That one doesn't last too long, so that's more of a around the house fragrance. And then I have my signature scent. This is a Mulgari Oats Vert. Uh, this one obviously looks worn, but I actually have travel sizes of this in my purse. So I do wear this fragrance a lot, but when where I wear this the most and when I go through bottles of this are the travel sized atomizers. And I actually just ran out of that. So I actually have an empty bottle of perfume, if you can believe it. Another bottle that I don't have with me um, that I need to pack and very soon repurchase is Eccentric Molecules Molecule One. That one is another greatest of all time, specifically summer scent. I love it. I do like the dupes and clones of Molecule One, but I personally prefer uh, that ISOE super on my skin. So that one is part of this list too. I just don't have the bottle to show you because again, I was supposed to go out of town. I have a bunch of bags packed and I don't go and then I pack another bag. I've just been sick, but that's a part of this list too. And if you have followed my channel, goodness, I don't know if this is still available, if you can buy it, I don't know, but I have to mention this one. This is the like perfume oil from Floralinda Perfumes Orange Blossom. Apple Blossom too is really good. Um, and if it's still available, I will link it below that. That link is not affiliate link, by the way. Uh, this is one of the most beautiful 
orange blossom smelling fragrances. I layer this with everything. I love this. I have like three or four of these. I wear these all the time. If you like orange blossom, super inexpensive. I think some places you can find it for like three to five bucks, six, seven bucks, and I'm not sure what it's going for. And our inflation has elevated the cost of things. I haven't purchased this in a while, but it is very affordable and a very beautiful if you just like orange blossom. So those are my utilitarian fragrances, the ones that I just kind of reach for and wear all the time. Uh, Bulgari Otevert. I obviously love tea and fragrances, black tea, green tea, Darjeeling tea, white tea, uh, herbal notes in fragrances. But, and a lot of these other fragrances will have tea notes in them, but these three teas are fragrances that I find to have really beautiful, very front and center, uh, front and center notes of tea that just work beautifully in summer and I wear all the time. This one I only spritz once, I only need to spritz it once. I can drown myself in this, but I prefer not to because I actually like the way that it smells and performs with just one spray. I usually just spray it on my neck, the front of my neck. And it's uh, Parfums de Nicolai uh, Fig Tea. Love this fragrance. It's absolutely beautiful and it layers gorgeous with another fragrance, which I will show you. And actually that is what I'm wearing today is that blend. Then we have a newer one to my collection. I've got this one, I think last year. So this is a newer one, but I've been loving this. Again, this is a one spritzer for me. Some of these fragrances I get and I drown myself with, and then I decide, I think I'm an over sprayer, but I prefer to spray with what the fragrance needs. I will drown myself in a fragrance if it allows it, but if it doesn't need it or if it's too much, I will not. I found that this is a one, maybe two spritz, and I got this and then I had so many fragrances to review and then it was bitter cold and then I was in the hospital so I haven't worn this a lot but I started wearing this again and I can tell you right now this is one I'm going to love wearing more and I when I review this fragrance you'll kind of understand why. Uh, this has been one that could easily be a utilitarian fragrance but when it comes down to a green tea scent I will always go to Bulgari Eau de Vert over others but for a kind of more of an elevated green tea experience, something a little bit more. There's just something really beautiful about this scent. And I do love replica fragrances. And last, which is my favorite tea fragrance, um, Bamboo Harmony from Kilian. Uh, this is obviously an older bottle. I get refills for this. I don't know if you can see, it's like down to here. This one I will drown myself in. So I do love this fragrance. I've sung it praises so many times. It is a must-have in my collection. Um, and Imperial Tea, which was unfortunately discontinued, would be a part of this list. No-brainer, but it's discontinued and I do not wear that unless I absolutely have to because that is one of my most favorite fragrances. And so I do not want to be without it. Um, it's very comforting. It's very like scent, memory, beautiful, grounding, almost like spiritual. Uh, so I will only wear that when I feel like I need that specialness in my life. And I've talked about that before, like how it smells like jasmine pearl tea. I've talked about that when I talked about the Fragonard Pearl de Jasmine. I, 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 all relative related videos will be linked below. So this video is not two bottles of roses, melange of sparkly florals and musks. These are some of my favorite. I have to share one that could be utility. I actually like this one for around the house as kind of a grab and go. This is a half a spritz for me. I can again drown myself in this, but I find it better as like a half a spritz. Um, and I do like to layer this with other things, slightly sweeter, waterier things. It's why this one doesn't look like it's used. A lot of times people ask me why I'm showing bottles and I say it's my favorite and I wear it and it doesn't look used. I found that I drown myself with some things like this and then other ones that I love, that I like to wear, I might even, I'm half a spritz and I might wear a half a spritz like two to three weeks and it doesn't look like I've worn through it. And when I have so many fragrances to wear, um, it doesn't look like I've touched them. This one I actually wear a lot. So this is Oud Violet from the House of Mancera. Now, 
oud violet smells, if I were to describe a fragrance, it smells like a men's fragrance counter, the, the quickest way I can describe it. And it's really not doing this fragrance any justice. And um, Coco Violet from the line is one, one of my favorite fragrances. It is so beautiful and so delicious. And you guys know how much I love violet and chocolate and things that are marshmallowy sweet, but I really love the way men's cologne smells. I know that's horrible to put it that way, but I do, I love the way that men's fragrances smell, um, especially on me. There's something that those notes and that composition pulls that I find to be very attractive on me and just works with my body chemistry that makes me feel very confident, especially in heat and humidity. So during the summer, I wear a lot of men's marketed fragrances. So I will wear a lot of the Toomey fragrances, which I absolutely love. The Bentley fragrances for men I wear, I absolutely love. There are just some gorgeous, gorgeous fragrances. Actually, I think Bentley Silver, I think it's Silver Lake could have easily been a part of this list. That one's gorgeous that I've been wearing a bunch, but that's more of like a most worn for the year to be completely honest. But it's not like a greatest because I, for the greatest of all time, I have to kind of yearn for it. And for me, especially when we go into the next category, sometimes I like things that have a little bit of a different edge to it. And I do like that this violet has a little bit of an edge to it and I like the way that this smells on my skin. It smells really, really nice. So sometimes men's marketed fragrances can be overpowering or be more fall winter appropriate, but this one just has a beautiful clarity to it on my skin, but has some beautiful just power to it that I don't lose, which I crave all the time, but doesn't get too suffocating or muddy in heat and humidity. It's one of my favorites. Another one that is just kind of an absolute must have in my collection is Neroli Portofino uh, from Tom Ford. Now, normally I will be wearing the body spray. I do wear this a lot, but it's normally the body spray that I wear. That is something that is permanently in my travel bag. I think I've gone through six or seven of those cans. I love the body spray. So um, I will wear that. That's what I wear and I love it. And I really like his body sprays. I think they're fantastic. They are incredibly expensive, but in my opinion, I think they perform very well and they're just so darn easy to pack. And I just think they're cool. I like that they're metal. So anyway, Neroli Portofino is a must have. If you follow my channel, you know I love that fragrance a lot. Um, but when we're going into Florals. If you're familiar with my channel, you know how much I love white florals and rose. But I also just love fragrances that have a bit of like spiciness. So I wouldn't say that this is like a rose fragrance. This is definitely more of like a pepper, but this is like my top 10 and I'm going to do an updated top 10 video. But this fragrance, if you are familiar with my channel, know this is like a top fragrance for me ever. And it's Bay Rose 26 from La Lava. This is a city exclusive for two Chicago. This one is freaking gorgeous. And it has that pink pepper note. And I've talked about pink pepper before. And I'll talk about it again, because like I said, I'm not going too much into notes, but we are talking about greatest fragrances of all time for summer and pink pepper specifically works so well. So if you like spicy fragrances, if you like complexity, if you like heaviness, if you like something more than just aquatics, more than just sparkly white musks, more than just that. If you want some sexy, bold edge that is not suffocating, that does not get lost, that is not headache inducing in heat and humidity, I prefer pink pepper. Now pink pepper, when you're cooking with pink pepper, it is such an interesting aromatic spice to use because obviously it is a pepper, but it has slight fruity undertones. That does not mean that it tastes fruity, but you know how some spices can be spicy, but then it might have nutty undertones or it might have smoky undertones, depending on where you get it from. Pink pepper has slight fruity undertones that pairs really well with certain dishes that can elevate and add depth and complexity when you're cooking. 
and when paired with specific fragrances, it that slight fruitiness, it is not fruity. It does not smell like fruit. It does not smell like an apple. It does not smell like a berry. It does not smell like a peach or a mango. But that little bit of fruitiness brightens in a way that does not detract from the spiciness. And that's what gives a bit of a clarity to the pepper that adds a kind of sexy, spicy kind of prickliness without it being too much. Now, black pepper on my skin can smell literally like Raid Bug Spray. I have a hard time with the black pepper note. I think the one from Parfums de Marley, I think it's Kalan is what it's called. It's like one of the only black pepper fragrances that works on my skin, which is why I gave that such a good review because I'm so excited that a black pepper fragrance worked for me. But I have a hard time with pepper, but this pepper is fantastic, which is why I think I love it so, so much. It smells so good and sexy and you get the beautiful florals in there too. Now, if you are a white floral lover, oh goodness, please, Fleurs d'Oranger from Serge Lutens. This literally smells like it looks and the added cumin in here just makes it extra special. I'm, I'm not gonna go into this because I think it does not need a super long gushy review. And I am planning on doing a, an entire Serge Lutens video or my collection of Serge Lutens. Um, so I'm going to go way more into that then, but a beautiful, rich, syrupy orange blossom. Gorgeous, 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 gorgeous. Perfection. But my favorite, my favorite is Aqua Universalis Forte from Francis Cajon. First fragrance from Francis Cajon that I bought and really a true gateway into a niche perfumery for me. Um, if you guys know the story behind this fragrance, you won't know why, I won't get into it, but beautiful white florals, uh, citruses, just perfection. I wouldn't say this is a specific floral, it's more of kind of like citrusy brightness, but the reason why I'm kind of putting it in the florals is because it's going to be a segue into other things. But also when I think about Francis Kershaw's profile into his house, aside from Baccarat Rouge, I think of watery musks, sparkly citruses, and just this kind of proprietary bouquet of white florals. And that's what this is. Now, an honorable mention for near, uh, near perfect, uh, almost at Aqua, Universalis, Aqua Universalis Forte, which is segueing into what I would consider to be fragrances that I wear for summer that hit different notes. So there's something about them that's transportive. So these are all transportive fragrances or there's something about them that's a little bit, I wanna say harder to grasp, but there's something about them that people might not think summer scent. So these aren't quite like summer fragrances, but these are fragrances that have notes or compositions that change something about what you would expect them to not work for summer that do work for summer. Um, or they're just transportive enough to take you out of the elements. So um, these are kind of like the miscellaneous section. So the miscellaneous section is actually including Nightingale, Nightingale from Dixic and Zach. Now, this is a very kind of animalic night blooming jasmine. Night blooming jasmine, the specific night blooming jasmine note is an untamed jasmine note. It is animalic. It is on the more kind of rugged side, but there's something about it that is so deeply beautiful and just so deeply just kind of carnal. And I love it. I've talked about my love of jasmine fragrances and what jasmine means to me and all that stuff. But this specific fragrance is transportive because it is kind of hot and dry, but that works so good for hot, humid weather. So sometimes you want fragrances to cool you down and transport you, which we'll get into in the next few fragrances. But sometimes you want that complexity. Sometimes you want those notes that you would think would be more appropriate for fall fragrances 
or winter fragrances or winter um, transitioning into cool spring. And you think to yourself, kind of like more animalic, musky notes, oods, woods, things that are rich and dense and warm and cozy and like carnal and vegetal and all these notes. You think summer, they would be too heavy, too suffocating, too muddy. But there's something about how beautifully this is crafted and put together that if you love and yearn for like a very kind of almost like masculine jasmine fragrance that's transportive and warm and beautiful and you need that depth and richness in your fragrance rotation and you miss it in summer, this is a must try, at least try it. It is so gorgeous. But like also when it comes down to transportive summer fragrances, we go to tropical. So that transports you to kind of like beautiful kind of like dry areas with like uh, jasmine plants everywhere in the middle of the night when it's like hot and dry. But most of the time when people think of transportive fragrances, when it comes down to summertime, it goes to obviously tropical climates. So these are my greatest of all time tropical. So the next one could have easily been in my my floral section, but I find this to be more transportive and less floral centric. And it's Atlantide from Tiziana Trini. Beautiful fragrance. Also presentation of this is like 15 out of 10. I think it's so cool how you literally have to dip your hand in sea water to pull it out of this like giant jar. Um, gorgeous tube rose. Beautiful kind of green, like like full of just moisture in the petals, tuberose. Kind of slightly spicy, but like the spiciness is like a pink pepper. It's like a ginger meaty spice, just, just a little bit. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Kind of transport too, makes you feel like a mermaid. Now, I mentioned earlier that I am layering something with this. I am layering Virgin Island water. Goodness, this is obviously, I'm wearing a bunch of it. Goodness, this fragrance is one of my favorite fragrances from the House of Creed. I know a lot of people have very real thoughts on the House of Creed, and I'm not here to argue those with you. Oh no. But I am here to tell you that if you like tropical, fruity, delicious, sexy fragrances, and you like coconut, oh goodness, this. Now, I layer this most of the time with Aventus. It is freaking phenomenal and my most layered combo, to be completely honest. Let's, I, I probably layer that more than just about anything else. Let's, let's be honest here. Um, at least hindsight bias. But I found that the, the milkiness of fig works so good with this. But the, the, just the way that these two come together smells so so good. So this is actually what I'm wearing today is these two. And that's been a recent, uh, the past like two weeks kind of layering blend that I've been doing. I've done it before, um, once or twice and I really liked it, but I was, you know, in the, in the process of reviewing a bunch of things, I kind of forgot about it. And then I kind of redid it again and it's been kind of a, a obsession, but most definitely a uh, Virgin Island water from the House of Creed is a greatest of all time. Now, a note that I find to be a little hard to wear. Um, so this is kind of going along the lines of Oud Violet and the Nightingale, like you, but it's still transportive to me, is Eau de Memo from Memo Paris. This is a leather note, but what makes this kind of transportive, I find to be that beautiful, crisp, kind of tangy apple note. And there's just something really beautiful about this. And if you follow my channel, you know I love this fragrance. It's so good. I can sing its praises all the time. I do love the house. I do think they can be slightly overpriced for some of their fragrances. That one, the last transportive fragrance, I think we have to have mango in here. And we have Cruz del Sur 2 from Zerjoff. This is beautiful. Now, Tropic of Capricorn from Olympic Orchids, I find to be stunning. And it could easily possibly be part of this list. I don't wear it enough and I find it to be challenging in a way that I love, but it's hard to wear around a lot of different people. So it's kind of like a runner up. But if you desire that um, 
that beautiful mango note fist. Kenzo Jungle Elephant is another one and that also stays on your skin for like 10 years. Like if you put that on, uh, on if you wear it for your wedding day, you're gonna be wearing it for your like 25 year anniversary if you never wear anything else again. That fragrance sticks to your skin, it's so good. But transportive and delicious and almost kind of like a smoothie. And if you guys know I have like a mango latte smoothie every morning with like protein and yogurt, it's so good. I love mango. Um, this is just perfection, transportive, tropical, luscious, sexy, a uh, fruity, and just there's something about it that works. And it's not fruity, sparkly. It's like fruity, like indolic, like rich and ripe. And so definitely a greatest of all time. But we are at the end. So my favorite greatest of all time summer scents. And I've shared with you guys a lot of fragrances that if you're familiar with my channel, if you're familiar with my tastes, you might have thought that would be a part of my favorite greatest of all time. That would be, that would be. But truly, honestly, I don't wear this one or I have not worn this one virtually at all in the past like six to seven months because I've been wearing a lot of different things, I've been in and out of the hospital. Uh, you know, if you're familiar with what's been going on, there's there's been a lot of reasons for me not to wear fragrances, but this is, even if I don't wear it, I want to wear it. And when I do wear this, oh, I get excited. And it is Chanel number five. Oh, this one. Oh, goodness. So this to me is the perfect, for me, the greatest of all time summer scents because I love Chanel fragrances. I love Chanel number five. I, there's a beauty to it. And when I've talked about flankers before, this is like one of the most perfect flankers ever because it to me truly transforms Chanel number no. five in a way that is modern and updated, even though I, I like the original, but it does so in a way that I think is smart. And I also find this to be just such a gorgeous and classy scent, but also just so wearable. And just the way that this is composed is so perfect for summer without sacrificing what makes Chanel number no. five so iconic. So this this to me is, for me, again, this is, this is my greatest of all time, summer scents, uh, Chanel number no. five look. This was the easiest decision in, in this entire thing. This one and Bamboo Harmony from Killian and um, Aqua Universalis Forte. Those three, these three, easiest. And honestly, those three are the top three. If I had to choose the top three from this list, it would be number one, number two, number three. Easy, 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 easy choice. Um, when we go down more, then we're kind of getting more into tastes and weather and what, you know, what is my current trending favorite note or how I want to smell because that changes from time to time. But those three, easy. Chanel number five, low. Easy, like no, like quick, yes. And it comes down to favorite, so. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for sitting through yet another very long and chatty uh, video. Again, this isn't like a top 10 video. This is more of a chatty sharing favorite scents. I know we have a few more weeks until we get to summer, but goodness, it feels like summer here, so I figured now's the time to share. I'd love to know what your favorite fragrances are for summer. Which ones do you find uh, you reach for the most? Um, which ones are you like, I'm so tired of wearing these, I'm looking for something new, so these are the newest ones I'm gravitating towards. Let me know what those are, and thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.